All right, everyone, welcome back to another session of Comedy Sports DNI Talks with your host, me, Luis Cortez, a longtime Comedy Sports LA player, now Comedy Sports Chicago player, and also our Director of Diversity and Inclusion. We started this show a few months back in order to introduce you to our ensemble, but also to introduce you to a lot of the conversations that we're trying to normalize within our ensemble, within our fan group, and within anyone who comes and watches our shows. Also make these conversations a little bit more mainstream, not so taboo in the dark, uh, but also to introduce you to brand new ideas uh, and brand new uh, uh, um, uh, what's the, uh, themes that we might be uh, running into as we continue this sort of work. And today... I have a uh, very special episode because I have not just one, but I have two guests. Uh, I have uh, some friends of mine from outside the Comedy Sports Chicago world. They actually uh, come from Comedy Sports Worldwide, which we'll talk a little bit about today. So today will be a special episode as we are kind of stepping outside of the world of Chicago uh, for a little bit so that you can hear what's going on outside of not just uh, Chicago, but uh, kind of comedy sports nationwide. Uh, today, uh, my special guests are uh, Justin Green from Comedy Sports Las Vegas and Amelia Fowler from Comedy Sports New York. Hello, you two. How are we doing today? Pretty okay. Yeah? yeah it's a How good are day. you? It's a good day. I'm good. I'm good. I'm very excited that you're both here. I know we've been talking for a little bit, doing some other sort of work, but um, but essentially what I wanted to do was introduce everyone, uh, not just to the both of you, but also to the work that we have been doing over the last, uh, coming up on a year or so. I think we did the math and we said it was about 10, yeah. 11 months that we started working on this. So uh, a little bit of uh, an introduction. In fact, uh, before we go into any of that, um, why don't you both just uh, go ahead, introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, your background, and then uh, where where you started with comedy sports. Uh, let's start. Let's start with Amelia. Oh, um, I am an actor by trade. Um, I am from Brooklyn, New York, and I'm still in Brooklyn, New York, New York forever. And I started with uh, comedy sports, New York, some. I want to say 13, 14 years ago or so. Um, and to be honest with you, just recently, maybe in the last few years, I have gotten more active in different conversations within comedy sports and within uh, the worldwide scene. And um, let's see, you know what? We'll come back to that question. Let me just let <laughs> Justin do his thing. Cool. Uh, I'm Justin. Uh, I am a co-owner and the artistic director of Comedy Sports Las Vegas. Uh, originally, I grew up in Buffalo, New York forever, I guess, but also I left it. Uh, started in Buffalo uh, in 2010. Uh, so it's been almost like 11 years uh, since I've been doing comedy sports. And yeah, I moved out here kind of with the idea of starting my own comedy sports. And that's what I did with a couple other managers. And it's been a wild ride. So that was going to be my next question, actually. Um, for those of you that are unaware, both Justin and Amelia are co-owners of the comedy sports that they play for. Um, so what was it that uh, that made you want to become a co-owner? Ooh, that's a cool question. Uh, I, do you mind if I answer first, Amelia? Yes, please. Cool. Uh, so I started comedy sports super, super young. I was, I auditioned when I was 14 and like in Buffalo at the time, we didn't have like a high school league. We didn't have minor league. Like it was literally just like a, a pro comedy sports audition. And so when I made it, I was like, oh, this is so cool. Like, and, and I think a lot of it was like growing up in comedy sports. Like I was growing up, not just in Buffalo, but going to championship. Like a lot of the people in comedy sports who have been there forever, like have seen me sort of grow up. So I always knew I wanted to start a comedy sport just because it's such a huge chunk of my life. Uh, so literally when I was looking for places to move out of Buffalo, I was already like, what city doesn't have a comedy sports that I like could move and start a comedy sports in? Like it's always been sort of a back burner dream of mine. So you grew up around it. Yeah, oh, 100 percent. Yeah, like it's it's. I look back at it and it's hilarious. It's like a little funny to me, but like, yeah, my best friends were like adults in comedy sports when I was in like high school. I'd be like a freshman in high school, like gotta go do my show with my forty year old friends, which is hilarious. But yeah. So so then you and I essentially started around the same age because I started comedy sports in high school and I was yeah. sixteen. 
but you were doing it on the professional stage at at 14. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh uh Amelia. Yeah, um first of all, adorable. I'm sorry. I just had cuz I remember seeing you uh, when I went to championship in, yeah, it was still championship back then. Championship. Bubble, yeah, 2013. Yeah, yeah, back in 2013. It was like, oh my God. Oh, I was horrified, so scared all the time. <laughs> you didn't come off that way. It was also that moment of, so where do we, oh, we can't go here, but we can go here. Oh yeah, I couldn't go to any of the after party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like, oh, hey, Justin, you were able to come to that. That was so lovely. What year was that? I'm not what year, but where were we that year? Buffalo. 2013 was in Buffalo. And I think that was the only reason that I was able to go because there was like, they made a rule that you had to be a certain age to go to championship. But I think because we were hosting, like I was like, well, I'm still, I'm, I'm also probably part of the reason they made that rule because I was like a minor for the next three championships or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I was in Buffalo in 2013. Adorable. And the best shirt ever. Thank Little... you. I didn't design it, but thank you. so cute. <laughs> Like, I still have that. I don't even do shirts like that. Like, I love, oh, I love it. Um, yeah, why did I choose to buy? First of all, I did not <laughs> start in comedy sports as a teenager. Um, I, I was I was grown uh, and came to it from one of my other uh, survival jobs that was kind of not a survival job. That person was in the team, told me to come on down, audition, everyone was cool. Uh, New York went through a lot of transitions, both managerially and uh, team-wise, and it got to the point that we were at this fabulous um, uh, uh, peak where uh, one person was leaving, the structure was changing, and it looked like it was time, in my opinion, someone had told me about it, and said, I think you'd be a good addition. And I was like, I think you're right. And I realized there would be representation and voices matter. You don't think about a specific thing if you really haven't developed it, right? You realize very quickly that when you walk out into the street, your concerns are different than mine. When I walk out the door, I'm thinking, do I have everything with me? Do I have everything I need for the day? But then there are other things I encounter, like um, I'm short, I'm really short, right? I'm constantly scanning the ground for things that I might actually get in the way of. I'm never looking up. Tall people look up because tall things are there. Branches, things of that nature. It's a different perspective. And having that perspective is what creates a safe environment for both the tall and the short, right? So the same thing is for women, LGBTQ, um, people of color, all of it. Because if you're from that particular um, group, you're thinking, the way that group thinks. So you're able to, how do I put it? Um, think ahead with that in, in mind. So that's been actually, I'll be honest with you, having uh, our team is two women, two men. Uh, two people are, um, are either gay or queer and two people are straight. And it, it's, it's, and I'm, I'm black um, and they're not. Um, <laughs> oh, I wasn't even drinking anything. Stop the recording. Stop the recording. <laughs> like what? Um, and it's it's created a conversation that I do think has assisted in us growing our diversity and making it a more hospitable place to be. So, um, when what year did you did you say that you became an owner? Um, I believe it's three years now, so that would be yes, you've um, been owner for 17. Three years, 2017. Yeah. And Justin, what year did you did you start out? Uh, we officially started Comedy Sports, I think, in 2018. So okay. yeah. So you you've both been owners about two or three years at this point. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still and, new. So yeah. so you were about two you were each about two years in when you started this this DNI journey. And what what was it that what what like what started that ball rolling? Okay, I, I'll say this: uh, the the DNI or DEI or, or, or whichever it's called, um, starting it worldwide is is like the last couple of years. But starting it in the home city has been a focus from the beginning. Okay, so when you took over three years ago, your first focus was 
DEI, DNI for New York. One of my first focuses, yes, because I was like, there's no people of color here. We need to have something more equitable here. It started with casting and just moved out from there. Okay. Um, And Justin, was this... um, was this something that you kind of started attacking from the beginning, like from step one, or was it something that came in later? Yeah, it actually kind of like to echo kind of what Amelia was saying, like, I, I feel like just having a diverse perspective in a management position already put DEI on the forefront in regards to like, you know, casting, like, especially because like my role within our comedy sports as artistic director, but I'm also doing all of our graphic design, like all of our outreach, like all those things fall under my umbrella. Uh, so we didn't have an official DEI sort of committee in Las Vegas uh, until about a year ago, but it was already like on the forefront of my mind just because of my perspective, like my life perspective. Yeah. And as far as like the worldwide stuff, I believe we all got together. Yeah. Like we said, like 10 months ago, right? Yeah. 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 And that, so yeah, that's, that's yeah. And you know, for, for me, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an owner, but a few years ago, um, Nicole Devon here from Chicago, who had been doing some worldwide stuff, um, I think she she had been doing a good amount of work, but I think they also hit a lot of walls where they were just kind of like not sure where to go from there. Um, I think very similar walls that we've hit along the way and kind of had to figure out. But with her, she also stated, uh, even though she is a woman and part of an underrepresented group, she felt that as a white woman, she might not be the best person to represent this position. And so she, you know, she talked to me about uh, taking it over in Chicago. And, and I've said this before, though I didn't completely agree with her decision, I, I respected it and just went, OK, if that's really how you feel. I will take this position from you. And then same thing. I've kind of been working at it from a few different angles, you know, as much as you can in a in a volunteer position. Um, where you don't really wield a lot of power, and so there's not a lot of there's not a lot there's not a lot behind you to to help you get these things passed. Um, but then, after a few years, I was just kind of focusing on Chicago, and then I got a call from um, one of you, I believe. I, I called you. Yeah, it was you. That's it. Yeah, Justin, you called me. We were just like, we might be getting together to talk. Do you want to talk? And I was. I'd already kind of been through the ringer with some worldwide stuff that I was just like, all right, here we go again. All right. Yeah, I'll talk. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> I'd stepped in, stepped out because I I, <laughs> I, I I didn't know what I was doing and I would just get too frustrated, too emotional. Uh, but then I was like, maybe with some other people, this might seem a little easier. Um, so we met. Uh, so this would have been April, May of 2020, we were just at the height of, not even at the height, we were just getting comfortable into one month of being locked in might turn into two, I think is kind of where we were. Um, And we started just having conversations. And so I think what, I think one thing that we talked from the beginning was transparency, transparency and making sure that everybody was aware of everything, um, from every direction. So uh, I, I think it, it, to explain to people how we got to this point would be would be a, a, a kind of a smart move. So what do you recall about those first few conversations that we were having when we were first meeting and kind of figuring out, you know, what is Zoom and what are we doing? <laughs> I think from, from my perspective, I think, Amelia, you have a different perspective because I think you were actually approached about maybe starting a DEI committee, but I, I, we're like the, we're the third iteration of comedy sports DEI worldwide. And so from my perspective, it, it was right after uh, George Floyd was murdered that I was kind of way, I was, you know, because we have our Facebook group with all the players or whatever from all the different, you know, um, cities. And I was, you know, waiting for some sort of statement or some sort of check-in just to be like, is everyone okay? Like, how are you feeling? Like, I know we're all processing trauma right now. And like that statement in in my personal opinion took a, a little bit long to get out uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and that's when I called you, Louise, because I was like, I feel like, you know, people should be doing more. And I think it was either you or Matt um, that was like, yeah, like you can, you can also do more. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Like, let me, let's, you know, try and figure something out. And that's, I think, 
at least in my mind, I think this was one of the first calls I had with you, Luis, was like me not necessarily feeling like equipped to start like a DEI committee. And you were kind of just like, you are like, start, like, let's do it. You know what I mean? So I think then we got Amelia and then the three of us just started meeting consistently uh, and having these kind of conversations about what changes that we want to see within comedy sports worldwide to make it a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive place for everyone. I actually remember that conversation now because I remember that at the end of it, you were just like, I don't, I just don't know if, if I could do this. And I was like, you're like half my age and an owner. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think you could do this. <laughs> like, I'm sitting here doing work for free at 40 and you're an owner. <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you getting advice from me? <laughs> I should be asking you for a job. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'll, I was literally pacing up and down my room. Like, I remember that conversation very vividly. Oh, like, all those, I, 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 I've walked a circle into my basement with how many of those conversations I just went down there for, just walking <laughs> in a loop, like, oh, I'm getting so frustrated and right. Yeah. Out. Amelia, what do you recall about those first few conversations? Okay. So horrific, horrified from the George Floyd situation. Uh, Matt had reached out to me uh, asking about uh, reviving the D D and I committee at the time. It, that's what it was. I had been a member of the D and I committee. I had spoken to Nicole when it. Uh, I I did. I I hadn't realized it was a second incarnation of it when she was helming it. I didn't know if it was. I just had never. I hadn't heard about it within the space of comedy sports, so I didn't know that it had ever lived prior to that. So I was like, oh, great, you always start a DNI committee. I think that's great. Let's do this dang thing. And it just, it was, there was a lot of goodwill, but not a, a, a lot of commitment and focus on a lot of members' parts, including my own. Right? Because it was just like, what? What's going on? Okay, what? Oh, got involved in that thing. What's that thing? But um, this second time being approached um, by Matt, because Nicole approached me the first time too, it was just like, okay, cool. Um, Matt had approached, and this time it was on the heels of George Floyd. And all of us were stuck in quarantine to some degree, or most of us were stuck in quarantine. And we all watched him expire in front of our eyes and the anger and the hurt were so real and tangible. So I was like, okay, I know I can't do this alone. I'm positive of it. Cause I saw Nicole try to helm it and she fought and she did. And I know I don't have the patience for it, nor, nor hate using the term, but bandwidth to take that all in, right? And he was talking about, oh, you all, and you could do this and you might want to reach out to Justin. And I'm like, and Luis, right? Because I knew you had taken it over. And I was very clear that that had taken place. So I was like, I don't want to disrespect the work that you had done prior. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was like, so we're reaching out. And I don't remember how it all came, if it was me reaching out to both of you and you all were like, yeah, I was coming to reach out to y'all too. I don't remember how that all, all, you know, gelled out. But long story short, we wound up all speaking to each other. Uh, and I think we did have a conversation with Matt at some point as well as, uh, as well. And we were like, okay, let's just be real. Are we willing to do this? Let's get clear. Are we, are we cool to do this? We know this is going to take time, attention, focus, some emotional work. Are we cool? And we, we consented. And, you know, even in our starting of it, it was a DEI moment. Because we changed yeah. from D N I to D E I, yeah, uh, and it, it was an equitable moment. We ha we made the choice to do this. It wasn't like oh, okay, so white people can't handle this topic, so I guess the the brown and black folks have to. It wasn't that. It was like oh, there's a need. There are people within this organization that understand there's a need, but that they, they don't have the full breadth of experience to have the full breadth of knowledge of how to do this. And by virtue of what we do in our cities and the positions we have there and our own backgrounds, like for love of God, Luis is a sociologist. Like, I mean, I, we have people with background in this. These are three people that talent, 
and circumstance can assist them in creating an organization that can keep a conversation ongoing that needs to be kept ongoing, and hence why we are here. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point about us like choosing to do the work because I think we consistently every time we meet we you know we're, we're making the choice to do it. Like I, I never necessarily feel re required. I like I think we all do a really good job of checking in with each other, especially when things get a little tense or like if people are like, hey, I need just a, a break this week or this weekend. Like I think we're really good about consistently not forcing anyone on anything, but always being here to do the work. And that's something I was thinking about recently is like, well, why are we, why do we choose to do the work? And I think it's something that we said or in one of those early meetings about maybe forming uh, DEI stuff in Chicago and kind of like getting to that position. And then thinking that like a whole bunch of like people of color or LGBT players would kind of just come join you. And it would be like this kind of easy transition. And it wasn't right. And then you kind of said, yeah, like some players, like everyone deserves the right to just come here and like do a show and then get drinks after and then go home. Like there shouldn't be put like, I, I guess a special requirement just because you are, you know, a member of a marginalized community that you're also gonna do the DEI work, right? And I, I like I like the idea that we're choosing to do the work so that other players don't have to, right? Like we're trying to make it inclusive for everyone so that everyone can just ultimately have fun. And if you wanna get more involved, you can. And if you don't, that's also totally fine. Yeah, pigment and underrepresentation doesn't mean it is your job. I think a lot of it for people. me as well and over the last few years has been like, I, the, the, the shine fell off the apple years ago. Like, I know comedy sports can be very like, kumbaya, we're family, but even that stuff for me, I was like, yeah, 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 that's great. <laughs> like, yeah, good for you, yay. Oh, like that, that fell off my, that, that chip was long gone years ago. Um, but, the last few years has been, you know, learning about all this stuff so much that it's kind of been a little like, ee -er, ee -er, ee -er, and I'm seeing a lot of different situations in a lot of different ways. So it's just been like, oh, oh my God, I never, I never realized, I never thought of it this way. I never, this, that, and the other thing, though I still believe that my experiences have been for the most part positive. There were a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm starting to see now it, which is why I think like I'm still having so much trouble like uh, 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 just processing a lot of this stuff. And I definitely was not prepared when because I was involved in that second iteration of DNI where it just kind of fizzled, I think, because a lot of us just didn't know what we were doing. Like I remember actually trying to figure out a way for all of us to meet and someone I think mentioned Zoom and we tried it once and de we were definitely all like, uh good. like it was so much harder back then that we just kind of like uh maybe in 10 years you know like um but you know in in philly when we had a championship in philly i went to talk to all the managers and after just being through like the meeting that y'all just went through this last week with all the, the managers getting together and stakeholders and stuff like that i sat through one and just when it got time for me to talk, I just I lost it. I got so emotional and angry just because I was I'd never witnessed that in that in that way. And so I just like I kind of let loose. And I'm sure I scared a lot of white people. Um and so like I, I obviously knew at the time like I did not approach this the right way. <laughs> this was not the way to go. Um and so the second time around, or for me at least, has been a lot of like observing and learning and not like knowing how to present it correctly because th that's I'm tone policing myself which I don't want to do but also like just w what is going to be more productive for the rest of us as I try to process all of this new stuff um but you know that which also brings up another great question in regards to we've been doing it for 10 11 months now how have you processed all the the emotional labor that comes along with this work? Oh, that's a great question. I think it brings up another like great point. I think like our catchphrase for the first like six, seven months was just like, we're building the car like as we're driving it. Like it seemed like, you know, we would, you know, get an idea of like what our next thing was and then we'd head towards that goal and then six other things would pop up. And it, like, we were constantly like, we got it. No, we don't. We got it. No, we don't. And so like, there was, you know, definitely some like very tough weeks, definitely a lot of emotional, like burden, I guess, trying to figure out exactly like 
how to get things done and what is the most like efficient way and how we're gonna you know get stuff together and i think for me at least i i think the ability that like not only do we work well as a team but like a lot of our meetings jump between like getting work done and just being able to like talk openly with each other and talk about how we're feeling i think for me being able to do that with both of you and the rest of the dei committee helps me stay like emotionally charged and like balanced in a way where I'm like, okay, I can keep doing this work because I don't feel like I'm doing it alone. Like I, I feel like if it were just me, I would be spiraling most of the time. I have gone through a lot of like back and forth of like hands on, hands off because it just gets too much. But as you both know, like there's a re- there's a reason why you're we call me the table flipper. Like I just the emotion of it just gets me so riled up sometimes that are like, I need a week. Like, it's just so, it's so much. It really like, it was, it, it, I, I will say the last few months, there's been so much like weight fluctuation from a lot of the stuff that's, that comes out of it. And just like moments of just sheer, like, I'm, I'm going to have a nice breakdown in my office for a few minutes. So, Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, I mean, hmm. I think the thing people don't realize very often is that um, all the things that were underrepresented as those things don't become an issue until we deal with the outside world. Right. And live in your own happy, you know, queer of color, female, um person with disability life is cool when you don't have anyone going hey i'm going to give you some sort of something around that and having to constantly express the otherness and the hurt and the anger and have to do it in a tone where people can hear you as opposed to because very often inside that's what it feels like it's emotionally, physically, and mentally draining. And if you don't recharge from that, you don't have any more in you to give. So being very conscious about that and knowing that, hey guys, I'm sorry, I can't do this meeting today. I need, I need, I need a personal health, mental health day. I now take weekends off from DEI work. I usually, if, I, if I'm doing the DEI work, either in this capacity or in another capacity, because I either, even in my own city or for another, you know, tangentially related, you know, improv troupe, I need two days out of that week to not be a black woman who is sexually friendly. That's, that's, that's my orientation friendly. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it needs to have that breath. And that's why we don't, and we encourage people not to assume that anyone who's underrepresented, underrepresented needs to do this work with you. It is not their obligation. When somebody seeks knowledge, it is their job to seek it, not someone else's job to give it. And and that's why, because this, it hurts to know that people don't respect you because of something arbitrary about you that you have nothing to do with. It's, it's a lot. And psychically, you need some time to away from it. And sometimes I just want to sit down and watch WandaVision. <laughs> no spoilers. Okay. No, just I haven't. We all know. I I'm saving it. Up. I'm <laughs> saving it. Watch things. I haven't seen it yet. I've, I've started. Like, it's on my queue. I've been watching a lot of history. But yeah, yeah I want to just sit down and watch WandaVision. That's what I'm going to do this weekend. Watch WandaVision. <laughs> but I do think, like, you, you both bring up really good points. I. I two things that kind of struck me is like, I do think our team dynamic works really well. Like Louise, like is kind of the table flipper and like, we, we need that. And like Amelia is, if you've ever had a conversation with Amelia, if you've ever seen her mediate anything, she has this ability to just like, like recognize the tension in the room, acknowledge it and then throw it away. So that everyone feels comfortable just, yeah. Being able to like talk openly. Like she's very great at creating a very open, safe space. 
um, and I do this. <laughs> so like, right, we all have like our, uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, just. Your ability for brevity and getting straight to the point and concisely stating a view is really top notch because very often either me or Luis will trail. <laughs> we trail. I, I know do. we do. I respect us. We do. And then and then Justin will come in, so ABC. And we're like, <laughs> Yeah, that <laughs> I tend to get caught up on like really broad, deep themes that like this is what this is what we and then Justin's like, ah, d d good for you, Luis. <laughs> <laughs> Or I'm now, so now as we come now as we come down fr from your dream speech, <laughs> here's some tangible things we can work on. Which is great. The speeches are great. Like both Amelia and Louis, <laughs> really, really great. But I take the notes because they're succinct. Uh, but yeah, right. Like it takes all of us, and I and I love that we. I don't. I think we did a really good job of not like tone policing or saying like this is how you need to work through this issue or this is how you need to communicate this issue because. I think we are all in agreement that there's not one way to do DEI. It, like, right, we're not a monolith. We don't answer for every single, you know, person who's in a certain community. Like we're doing the best from our perspectives and our experience. Um, so yeah, I, I think the synergy of our team is also what helps it thrive and succeed. What, what you just said, Justin, about be, not being every voice, we're not here to be every voice. Just to, to Justin's point, we're here to uplift every voice so you can hear them. Because very often they're in your city, they're in your space, they're in your workplace, saying exactly what needs to be done. But unless somebody with a PhD walks through the door, no one listens. And even then, they seem to be able to disconnect that PhD's teaching and instruction from the actual human who they're dealing with every day. So our, I think our job and our mission is to synthesize the two. So you can listen to the PhD. They're lovely because they need to make dollars too. But you need to listen to the human being, the actual corporeal human being that's right there saying, hey, I keep giving uh, ideas and meetings and you keep hijacking them and then not crediting me with said idea. Not cool, man. And that not being, oh, she's like that, or she's like that. It just being, oh, you're right. Sorry. Need to oh. make sure that I don't do that in the future. Now, having done this work for almost a year, mm -hmm. what would you, what, what, kind, what would you want to share, not just to like the comedy sports world, but to like, to, to people so they're, they have that transparency from us. They know you know, obviously the bigger thing being, this is us. We're, we're the bulk of the bulk of the group with some other people having jumped in over the last few months from different cities, helping us out uh, when, when they can. Um, you know, the fact that we're three people of color, uh, uh, we're LGBT, um, you're both part owners. Awesome. I am saving up for a hat, so that's going to be great. <laughs> uh but like what is what what are the things that you would want people to be aware of about us i We're think humans that's what i was gonna say i was gonna Get say right, like, head. we do like I, it's so like i think as we kind of talk about this work like it's it's a lot of work and i think the three of us do our best to get as much done as we can all of the time like as much as humanly possible within also right like this is a volunteer thing like we do have other commitments and other jobs that need to get done and so I think yeah just like we're also human and I, I think that's the biggest thing is like we're all human we don't expect everyone to get it right we just expect people to try and always do better than you know how they've done things before and we're the same way right like we I don't think yeah, like we miss an email we miss something but we're always trying to like right just get things better and lift voices. I think that is our main synthesized, concise little mission statement. It's like, that's what we're here to do. Like, I think a lot of time when we focus on this work and, I, and I've seen a lot of focus on this work be centered around the diversity aspect and like, how do we bring new voices? How do we get new people on our teams? How do we get, right? Like our city more diverse, but we, we don't necessarily focus on the inclusion part a lot. And this is something Amelia was talking about, uh, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, but I think that's the part we're also here to remind people of is the inclusive part is listening to the voices that you already have 
because you do already have diverse voices. Yes, we could always use more, but there's so many voices in our theaters and our groups on our teams that we can already be listening to in order to start doing this work. And we're here to help lift those voices and just, yeah, remind people that they can use their voice when they want to. Yeah, I think one of the things that we talked about in the beginning, and it was something that I talked about with Chicago as well, is like all, all the moves that you're making right now, like if, if they feel weird or they feel like they're a reflex, it's it's because they are. It's because they are, and we just have to be okay with that because we're not gonna we're not gonna catch up without going through that sort of thing, you know, without like, okay, this feels really mechanical. It's like, yeah, it's because we don't know how to do it. So we're still like doing this thing and you know, we put out our statements, we put out our videos, and of course, like, well, this this feels weird. It's like, yeah, because we're not used to doing this. Like we need to normalize this stuff. It's it's why we have these conversations. It's why I sat down with my ensemble to talk about some of this stuff. And with some of them, it did take a little bit of like, just tell me some of this stuff. And it's because we don't talk about it. So of course it's kind of like, oh, and then by the end, it's blah, 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 blah. And that's when I'm like, all right, well, time's up. We got to go. Uh, as they're like, but I know everything is false. Uh, so, but it, it did become such a like a, a a humongous learning situation. I think I I can't speak for all three of us, but definitely for me, where I was just, you know, I'd always thought of certain things a certain way, and then without within our conversations, all of a sudden, again, it was very eye opening and just kind of reanalyzing things and even you know the the areas that I had to work on and where I was coming from with a lot of different things and you know having grown up the way I grew up and the terms I used to use and you know my my behavior just a, a lot of things that can't help but turn lights on air um, parts about yourself that you may not want lights turned on but it's it's so yeah like that that alone is so much emotional labor and then on top of trying to keep all that away from everybody else kind of like trying to hold that damn back as you're trying to break it it's yeah it it, re it really takes it out of you um but yeah i guess one of the bigger things would be for people to just like it, we're, we're people too we 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 have feelings and we get sad a lot about this stuff because we don't want you to have to go through it um but also like um like work wise like some of the things we've accomplished over the last few months, what would be some of the things that you would want to share about that? I, I just wanted to piggyback off of what you said oh. prior um, about the humanist, oink, oink, um, to, <laughs> uh, in reference to humanness and us having our own learning curves in this. This has been a lot about learning other people's triggers and learning our own. I, I, I will go on a, a, a ledge and say that we've all learned some things that make us go, what? And knowing that, I think it's assisted us in being more able to hear other people's triggers because we know that this work exposes those things, exposes those things that you thought you had handled that you don't. And knowing that for ourselves, helps us guide people through it. And that is something that's gonna come up in this because it's something that you're actually putting thought to. And as, as far as uh, the, the accomplishments we've had, I see, I'm, look, 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 I'm bridging things, I'm bridging things, ah, transition. As that has assisted us in doing the work we've done, we've been able to go into specific cities and uplift those voices that were trying to be heard and be able to translate from one to another. One of the, I, I, one of the most mm, valuable moments I've had was being able to sit in a Zoom room and hear one person voice what they thought was going on and have the other person voice what they thought was going on, be able to condense it so the other could hear it and have them both hear each other. Because a lot of what this has been has been people hearing, no, not that I'm hurt and I'm having an issue, hearing that you hurt me and you made an issue for me. So you're bad and you're wrong, as opposed to something you did 
caused this situation and now I'm hurt. It, making those distinctions has been amazing and, and fabulous to see how it's caused different structures to start up to create more breath. I think another couple of things that I'm super proud that we've accomplished as a committee. Um, I, I think when we started this committee, one of the things we like re realized right off like the bat was like, we don't know all of the issues. We, we, we can't speak to every single experience. So we need to figure out what is the comedy sports experience for different groups of people. We did that in two ways. The first one being our survey to get sort of quantitative data is how, you know, it was the quickest, easiest way to get quick information of like, what is the general temperature of, you, you know, your city or how you're feeling. Um, and so we released that. And I think, Luis, you mentioned that like um, one of the older iterations also released the survey, but like engagement on this survey was actually really, really high, right? We, we had like a, a, an extreme growth in the amount of participants in the survey. And that was really cool to be able to get some quantitative data, but we also hosted uh, town halls, uh, or I'm sorry, round table discussions for different groups of people so we can get more qualitative data and talk to like, what is the LGBT experience within CSE? in your city and worldwide? What is, what is it like being a, a person of color? What is it like being you know, a woman? And so we were able to get qualitative data and then based on both that quantitative and qualitative da data that we collected, we were able to form like a set of DEI minimum requirements that we were able to present to shareholders to you know, start working on building and um, creating the spaces that we wanna see and have it in legislation, right? Not just on good faith that this is what we want, but to actually work to make sure that every single organization that calls themselves a CSZ or a comedy sports is able to have some sort of minimum requirements centered around DEI, because that is our focus as a worldwide community. So those things are, I'm super proud of. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I was just thinking back to uh, like all those conversations that we had, the sit down conversations with essentially people from all over the league and then city specific ones and i think the thing that it didn't surprise me but this was one of the first times i'd actually seen and heard it where like despite where we were we we just kept hearing the same stories and and it it was very much again this very like whoa moment of like it's not so clean cut as to like cut each group up into a number of percentages because there's so much intermingling amongst the groups. And so it's hard to say like, well, you know, we have 10% this and 20% that because of the fact that it's like, yeah, but you know, 7% of that 20% is part of that 10%. So it doesn't, you know, it's like, it's, it's weird to, to, to break it down into numbers like that. But for me, it was definitely just seeing the overall, I don't want to say sameness, but at least hear, hearing these stories echoed over and over and over again. Yes, there were similar themes between groups, like regardless of, you know, what the, what the community was. And so the last 10 months or so have led up to us being able to present those to uh, uh, the, the shareholders and the, the owners in order for them to to add it to some of the the contract language where do y'all see us going from here because i mean we've solved racism we did it <laughs> oh easy i don't know <laughs> just <laughs> time travel time. take just a quick arby's time. break and then just start working on the next thing yeah, it's like i think it's time to retire actually i think yeah we're good we yeah let's do it hang out we still have sexism yeah Why? hey Why? Right. for sure we'll go to our 10 minutes they got the meats we'll get the meats the meats and then we'll move on to sexism that'd be great yeah. Yep, 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 yep. I think <laughs> this is this is actually an interesting conversation because I think we're just in the phase of our committee to be like, what is what is next for DEI worldwide? And I think a couple places that I want to see is look, number one, keeping up these conversations, like our roundtable discussions, and keep checking in so that way we can have like a, a measurable impact, right? Now that we've done this, how are people feeling, right? Just to make sure that we're growing in the in the right direction. I think we've also talked about you know, starting to generate content or point to content that helps educate people on different experiences. Cause I think that's something else that we found is 
almost like a, a lack of uh, understanding about certain experiences can lead to you forming opinions about those people, you know, who have those experiences. So I think us generating more content, both CSZ specific content, right? Like how to ref or like what it is to build an inclusive theater or things like that, but also just pointing to, you know, this is the black experience and here are some books and here is a podcast and here's a movie you can watch. Like just, you know, helping build a, a well of knowledge that everyone can slurp up from and just become really smart. <laughs> uh, so those are things that I'd like to see from our committee. Uh, ditto. Uh, in addition to having um, ownership and management more reflect a diverse team that they are working on building in each city. Like it shouldn't be, a, oh, there's a this on the team. It shouldn't be surprised. It shouldn't be surprised that there's a, you know, fill in underrepresented person here in that particular management structure. Uh, I'd like that to be a norm and not a, huh? Um, in addition, I would like us to get to the point where all our resource material and everything's so sound and it's a good body of work and everything that we can not only serve comedy sports, but also serve other arts organizations and other organizations to assist them with what we've learned here. Because I think communication is so key and so necessary, and that's the only way we're going to really not fix, because like nothing's broken it just doesn't work right because it's been chugging along so obviously the shit excuse my language obviously the stuff can happen it's just that it doesn't work so let's optimize let's make things work let's make sure these things work for everyone and not just for some i think the way i always saw that sort of thing was like I know you think it's as easy as just like taking a DNI cog and throwing it into the works, but I've always described it as like, but these works were not designed with this cog in mind. So this cog is just a wrench in your works. Cause what you're going to have to do is almost designed a whole new thing to fit that in from the beginning. Cause all you're trying to do is just shove this part that was not designed for this machine. And so it's why people come up with so much like, you know, it was like, well, we just tried. It's like, yeah, you're trying to force it. And it, it it's like you're trying to jump straight to just solution done. You know, racism solved. Like, <laughs> go to Arby's. No. We get it. We all want to go to Arby's. We get it. We all want the meats. They have the meats. But it's not going to happen until you've done your homework. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like to to. To, to get just to get people to a place of understanding of like this is definitely like it's a community thing we all need to do this together it's not just like here you know put this floppy disk into the machine and it should work just fine here's the update you wanted like it's gonna take everybody it's gonna take a lot of conversation and those uncomfortable ones as well but I know we can do it because I've been watching us do it for the last 10 months. Right. And so it just makes me go, oh, like the power we could have. <laughs> well, and the, the thing too is like, I think we like to, we want to find quick solutions because we, we want to be done with those issues, right? We want to say that, we, you know, we, we've solved our racism issue, but I think we've all, as we've, you know, kept doing this work and as we talk to other, you know, communities and theaters and cities, we see, we, that's our biggest thing that I feel like we always have to get across is like, you're never done there isn't a cog that you can put into your machine to fix everything like you're gonna have to keep checking in and keep making sure that things are working this work is literally never done and i i think the bridge between understanding that is sort of that empathy and understanding right like how do i because right we're, we're, we're dealing with a i guess like a microcosm of like the world at large and so we right until we fix all of these issues like these issues are going to keep happening and this is probably the perfect like mind to like describe the situation right like this is this is great but right like i think we're we keep trying to 
Yeah, like you said, look for quick solutions, but just knowing that it's a, it's it's never going to be 100% and that's okay. We're going to keep doing the work. Like as soon as you accept that, I think it becomes easier because there's that there's not a stress of a deadline to figure everything out by. It's like we're going to keep addressing, we're going to keep learning, we're going to keep growing. I mean, definitely been part of this group has helped me with my own work in Chicago because when I first started, I was very much like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to approach this. All I know is that it needs to get done. You know, and I was trying to do a lot of it by myself because I didn't want to, you know, fo- voice this work on other people when I know like how heavy and 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 cumbersome it can be. But watching y'all do your thing, I think it made me a little bit more like confident in taking certain steps and also being able to acknowledge that like, oh boy, you know, I'm going up against all these other larger theaters who are doing their thing. But now we know a lot of their things didn't work and it's why they've fallen apart. So it's just like, all right, so it really could be anything as long as we're doing some sort of work. So it's I've definitely been able to get more confident in, in that sense with just stuff within my own city, even though I still have so much work to do. Um, but I feel like as a whole, we're in a much, much better place. And it's been wonderful getting to uh, borrow things that you all have shared. I'm going to say borrow. I totally, I totally give you all credit, but definitely borrowing. Yeah, I think that's actually where we as a comedy sports exist the strongest. It's like we do have 30 different cities who are, you know, hopefully doing the work and we can borrow from each other. Like we have a network of people who are all creating content or doing things that, you know, help their city that'll help other cities. And that's something I guess I'd like to see us as a committee utilize more and build more is just those connections so that all of us are taking from each other. So all of us are, you know, doing this the most efficient way possible. Well, believe it or not, we're coming up on time. I know we could probably, I know, I know we could probably talk about this forever. And I know we talked about starting to do more of this in house so that we can get this information out, which I think after this, we definitely should. Uh, But uh, final thoughts. Um, I would say final thoughts. We're going to keep doing the work. If you feel like you want to start doing the work, you can. Like, There's no prerequisite to start doing something in your community, your theater, your city. If you need anything from us, we're always available. I'm sure Luis will add our email somewhere, wherever this goes. So please, oh, yeah. please reach out to us if you need help with anything. Um, and know that it is tough work, but it's 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 good work to be done. And go support your local Arby's. <laughs> I haven't been to an Arby's in decades. I have an Arby's. Oh, really? Oh, I haven't been to one in decades. I need to get to one. No, I'm. A, uh, this is so that I could get free Arby sandwiches for life. Is that real? Does it work? No. Yeah. This is this is my this is my Simpsons tattoo. This is right here is a stonecutter symbol from uh, one episode. And then this is the actual Arby's hat because one of my favorite lines from that episode, or not that episode, but an episode is, I'm so hungry, I could eat at Arby's. <laughs> and I grew up down the street from an Arby's, so we used to go all the time. So this actually makes me think of my family. But my sister constantly asks me, have you ever shown this at an Arby's? See if you could get some free something. And I was like, I have not. Why am I so stupid? <laughs> I never thought of it. That's such never a thought of it that way. Yeah, try. I mean, my mom loves a French dip, so if it works for you, let me know so I can <laughs> let her know. I can let her know. <laughs> like I've never, I haven't decades. Um, oh, parting thoughts. Um, do the work. Stay in the work. Stay in the conversation. In conversation, anything can happen. Literally. So yes. Ah, also be respectful in the conversation. Know that the person who is the underrepresented or marginalized, what they're saying is so. Their experience is so. It is for those who are not in that group to respect what they're sharing and give them room and space, not to get qualifications around it and get clear on other people's intentions because they won't know. So just stay in the conversation, realize that that person who's underrepresented is the, is, they are the specialist in what they're dealing with and treat them as such. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, for me, it's also been reaching a point of stop trying to convince people 
and just present what needs to be presented as so. Like, these are the facts. And stop presenting it like, please believe me. It's like, no, mm-hmm. here's what it is. And process that. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, thank you both so much for doing this. Uh, um, I will uh, we'll definitely do another one specifically for DNI Talks, but I definitely love the idea of starting to do these uh, for all the other comedy sports folks, so they are aware of all the things we talk about as well. Uh, for everyone out there, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please check out our Facebook page, our Instagram page. Please check us out on Twitch, CSZN, Comedy Sports Network. Uh, we have programming six days a week, except for Tuesdays. That's when we rehearse. Uh, but other than that, check out our channel because we have got programming every night of the week. Uh, thank you all so much, and we will see you next time at Comedy Sports DNI Talks.